first thing that we want to find out in this problem is the probability that both guesses are correct on a two problem quiz. Now the first thing we need to know of course is what is the probability that the uh, a single guess is correct. Since there are A, B, C, D, and E, that's five different options, um, there is a one out of five chance that somebody guesses the correct answer. So we'll just say the probability that a single guess is correct is equal to, well, there's only one right answer out of a total of five. So on a single guess, there's a one-fifth or about, well, not about, but 20% chance that you get a correct guess. The probability for both guesses correct which we'll, we can uh, denote for shorthand correct and correct. Well, we're assuming guesses are independent, so there's a one-fifth probability on the first one, and there's a one-fifth probability on the second one, so there's a one out of 25 chances that the person will get both the guesses correct. And that comes out to, let's see, one divided by 25, about 0.04 or 4%. So 4% chance that you guess on two problems with five possibilities each and that you guess both of them correctly. Not a very high likelihood. So let's do problem B. What is the probability that both guesses are incorrect? Okay, well, um, the probability that it's incorrect is the other four out of five. So we'll just say um, incorrect and incorrect, which uh, we didn't write this over here, but remember since under independence, they don't depend on each other, so it's the probability that it's incorrect times the probability that it's incorrect, which is basically four-fifths times four-fifths, or four-fifths squared, which is equal to 16 out of 25. So 16 out of 25. Now one of the common mistakes that people make here is they try to just do, oh well, both guesses are correct 1 out of 25 times, then that means both guesses are incorrect nine, uh, 24 out of 25 times. Well, that's not true. You can also just get one correct, but not the other. So, uh, got to be careful how much we oversimplify this. 16 out of 25 is equal to 64%. So, pretty good chance that you get both guesses incorrect. Part C, we want to know, what is the probability that it receives a 50% on the test? So the probability that it receives a 50% on the test is, well, in what ways can that happen? Um, well, you could get the f one of them correct and one of them incorrect. So let's just say the first one's correct and the second one's incorrect. Um, well, we also have to consider the probability that the first is correct and the second, excuse me, the first is incorrect and the second is correct. We can add these two probabilities together because, of course, you can't have both things happen, so there's no overlap here. And probability here is going to be, um, well, one-fifth for correct times four-fifths for incorrect plus four-fifths for the first one incorrect times one-fifth for the second one correct. Or really, it's just twice the probability of one of these guys since they're both going to work out to be the same, and that's going to be... 4 25ths plus 4 25ths, which is equal to 8 25ths. And 8 25ths is going to be about 32%. So we're going to come over here and write 32%. And that answers our question. How likely is it that he gets at least one problem correct? Well, again, good practice. Probability of at least one correct is equal to 1 minus the probability of uh, both incorrect. Okay, well that's equal to 1 minus um, probability of both incorrect is 64%. And that works out to be 36%. 36% chance that you get at least one correct. So still not very uh, good outcome, that's just over one third chance, one out of three chances that you're going to get at least one correct. That means one, the other, or both.
Uh, part E, we want to know what is the probability they receive a 90% on the exam. Assume no partial credit is possible. Well, if you think about it, he either gets one right or both correct. And if he gets both correct, that's 100%. If he only gets one right, that's 50%. And if he doesn't get any of them correct, that's 0%. So this is not possible. Not possible. You can't get uh, 50 or 90% with only two problems and no partial credit. You either get a 0%, you get them both wrong, 50%, get one right, or 100% get both right. So it's just not a possible outcome. F, how do the idea of counting tables allow you to answer these questions without having to do additional work um, for each subsequent table? Um, so if you did use tables here, well remember you could uh, break it up into the four possibilities. So I'll just kind of do a sketch. And uh, well if you basically calculate the areas of each of these segments then you've basically got all the information in front of you to answer all these questions here as well.